everybody welcome back to my youtube channel or if you're new around this neck of the woods my name is missa i'm 29 i was gonna say 28 and i love all things makeup that's my instagram that's my twitter could be the other way around can't remember go go follow them if you want um as you can see by the title today i am going to be putting on my face all of my favorites that i mentioned in my second last video i think it was sunday's video i'll link it up here I basically spoke about all my favourite products that I've been using and then I thought, Melissa, you probably should have put them on your face rather than just speak about them. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to do this whole look here, but it's mainly just showing you how the products work, doing close-ups, dimming the lights so you can see my skin up close. I'm not going to tell you what products I'm using right now because a lot of you will have watched my previous video, but if you haven't, you're going to see them in action. And these are products that I truly believe in. I'll link them all down below if you want to look at them. All of them except two are drugstore and affordable which is excellent in fact so yeah we've got two high ends mostly drugstore we're going to be quite zoomed in for the whole video and um, just so you can actually see and i think without any fanning around we should just jump into me looking very different and putting a lot of makeup on so if you want to see all my favorites in action keep on watching i'm quite zoomed in and i will zoom in more because i really do want you to see these products that i actually genuinely love on my face and I'll obviously like dim the lights and stuff because I want you to see as the products in as natural a state as possible without me going outside with my camera onto a busy street and talking because that's embarrassing. So first up is of course e.l.f. Luminous Putty Primer. This is in Universal Glow I think the shade name is. I feel like I'm quite generous with the amount I put on. Sometimes I'm quite not generous <laughs> with how much primer I put on because I'm like, well, it doesn't actually do anything and it's just a marketing ploy. But this, I really want the glow all over my face and also it does smooth. I should have put it on half so you could see. I am someone that thinks primers are unnecessary. Some of them are quite nice if they're like a moisturising primer. I really want to try the Smashbox Primerizer, which is a primer mixed with a moisturiser because I like moisturising my face. But I feel like this, just the texture of it, it really does fill in my pores but also with the luminosity it just adds this kind of subtle sheen that I would feel great kind of going out and about with no makeup on but just this and feeling like oh you know, I just look a bit more healthy. Never ever thought there'd be a day where I'd be like, yeah, buy this primer because it's so great. But here we are. And of course for foundation, it's going to be my Catrice Liquid HD. I wear the shade 010. I didn't actually mention that in my favourites, but a lot of people asked. I could probably get away with half a shade lighter, so I'll probably take it down my neck. This is lasts up to 24 hours mattifying second skin effect. I would say it's more satin on me, even not on top of a primer. I get this on just my look. I don't know where else sells Catrice in the UK. And this foundation, if you didn't know, has a dropper system. I've used this so much, I'm actually shocked it hasn't run out yet. A lot of people did say in my comments that this oxidised on them. I don't find that it does. But each person is different. You know me, I use quite a lot of foundation. I'll put this on half my face. I'm actually using my favourite sponge, which is the Coloured Rain sponges. Um, I don't think they have this design anymore but all the sponges are like the same material and I highly recommend you check them out. So I'll put it on half my face and then show you the difference up close. That is the foundation on half of my face and I'm sure you can see it just looks very foundation-y. It's just a blank canvas now whereas this side just has normal natural skin veins texture well not texture but darkness hyperpigmentation that kind of thing whereas you know me I like a full coverage base I would say this is a really strong medium if you've got really good skin it'll be full and um, if you've got quite blemish prone skin you'll probably need a couple of layers but I just feel like ugh, I just love this foundation with my whole heart. Over this primer it just looks delicious. It looks like satin and it does crease around my eyes of course everything does. 
but overall I just love it and over that primer you can probably see just a sheen on like my cheekbone it just mmm it really is to me very similar to the ABH foundation the finish and the coverage and I'd say it probably lasts longer than the ABH and I've said that for the price I would rather buy this because the ABH is so darn expensive whereas this is just in my opinion very affordable so I'll just quickly do the other side and then we'll move on that's the foundation over both sides of my face I wonder what you guys think of it I personally think it's so stunning it really feels like a high-end premium foundation for like seven pounds which blows my mind cheaper than Maybelline that blows my mind cheaper than L'Oreal I honestly I highly recommend this foundation if you find, especially, that you like the same kind of makeup that I do. I really feel like you'll love this one. Obviously, next up, we had one that kind of snuck in at the last moment. And I am actually just back from Aberdeen. I got back at, like, midnight last night. This is the only product I took with me. I just spent the weekend with my sister again and her kids. I'm pretty much going to spend every weekend there. Um, and I don't take makeup with me. I don't take anything with me except a concealer just so I can make myself look a tiny bit better. Um, this is the only one I took which is my e.l.f. Hydrating Camel Concealer. This, honestly, it just shocked me. I'm just going to put it on. And I probably still put on more than Robert would like. But, you know, I can't win them all. I'm still trying to do like half my face but I don't know how to do that with concealer. That was just one dip in but I still probably put a bit too much on. This concealer blends out like a dream whilst offering coverage and the hydration is just so beautiful feeling honestly especially when it's still in these like colder months and we feel like our skin just looks a bit naff this just I feel like brings so much life into the skin while offering coverage and if you watched my favourites video, you know that drugstore concealers never impressed me that much. I've never picked one up and been like, oh my goodness, this is the absolute best thing ever. This adds so much light, obviously depending on what shade you go for, whilst covering up darkness. Probably would not recommend this though for covering blemishes because you don't want to kind of draw attention to them with a hydrating concealer. Does crease on me, does not matter. But that is the concealer on one half. I just love how it feels. And again, it's one of those products that I feel is very high-end feeling whilst being oh, very, very cheap. I've blended this over like the mattest of matte foundations and it still blends so well. And you know that my Jouer and my Too Faced, I really love them for the coverage and the fact that they are so hydrating feeling. This is honestly so far in the same league. It does not offer quite the level of coverage, but it's enough that I feel very happy and I am someone that really likes a full coverage concealer. I just love it so much. I'm just gonna do the other side quickly. Ignoring the creases around my eyes just because that always happens with me with no matter what products. I feel like my base looks really great. I'm going, my niece turns 19 in a couple of weeks and I'm going on a night out with her and my sister. And I'm just going to wear this combination because I feel healthy and glowy and fresh and dewy but still covered and makeup y but not in a bad way. I just, I've got that kind of confidence that my full coverage base routine gives me but I still feel like I look healthy and not too cakey and not too too makeup-y. I don't know how to describe it and I never felt like I'm a very good poet when it comes to words but I just honestly think that base looks so healthy and lovely and if I had a special occasion I'd be so happy with my base looking like this. I need to set my makeup in place and that's where the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder comes into play. This is special because it's not just a loose setting powder. It is a loose setting powder with a bit of a glow. 
Um, I didn't really see a lot of comments on this when I mentioned it, except a lot of people were really liking it, although some said they didn't feel like it gave a glow. I do feel like it is definitely subtle. It is not something that you're gonna put on and be like, wow, look how intensely glowy I am. It's just gonna give you a hint of glow, and I think that's all that's really needed, especially when it's the setting powder. I don't think you wanna put on like, wham bam, glow. I'm just gonna get rid of my creases and then I'm just gonna bake my under eyes again. Sorry, Robert. I just like to grab a different sponge, one that I'm not using my foundation on. And I'm just gonna bake my under eyes. Oh, that was a lot. I usually do my smile lines as well on the side of my nose. For the rest of my face, I just use my BH Cosmetics Studio Pro 2 brush um, just because I don't want to put a whole heap on everywhere else but enough to just set down my base which does feel quite moist and quite glowy and dewy but for me, I need to set it and that means by using this powder which keeps a glow, gives you a glow, maintains a glow I'm not just kind of putting all of my luminosity that I've done to no use really because I'm going to keep it with this powder. It doesn't oxidise my base, it sets it beautifully and hopefully you can see I just have still a little bit of a sheen to my skin, nothing that looks crazy but I just definitely have more brightness in the high points where my ring light is catching but my face is also now set, I can go in with all my other powders and feel like my base is going to last all day and I always think it's nice when you put your makeup on and feel like you look good, you know? Same brush, another product, this won't shock you, Revolution Pro Skin Finish, this is an opalescent. A lot of people have mentioned that when they've gone to buy it, it's got a lot of blue streaks in it. Mine definitely had that, probably less than the one I just bought my niece, but I used her one. Doesn't go on blue in any way, so if you see it and you're like, oh, that's quite blue, maybe just scrape the top layer off, see if it disappears. If it doesn't, it really doesn't go on in any way blue, I do promise you. Um, I'm just gonna same brush and then just sweep this all over my entire face. This is not glittery, it just has a sheen. Very much like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. What a hell of a lot cheaper. I could go ham and just keep applying this, but you really do just need one layer. And there you go, really healthy, glowy skin. I've got a lot of makeup on my face, a lot of products, so I need to go in with a setting spray. Well, more a hydrating mist. It's my Alginist Splash. A lot of you in the comments were saying you really love the Alginist range. I'm not surprised, it's just, it's great. So I'm just gonna put this on. I allow myself quite a generous layer considering it's like 30 bucks. This just makes me feel like any excess powder on my skin is soaked up, I'm gonna sneeze. And just because I do have quite a lot of makeup on, it just makes me feel more fresh and bare skinned again, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does. I personally am a lover of the cake face, so a hydrating spray just makes me feel a lot more fresh and renewed. And I'll, <coughs> and I'll just apply that throughout the day, like say if in like six hours I needed to go out and about, I would just apply this before I left just to kind of refresh my face and make me feel like I'm, you know, more fresh again. Oh, this base though, right? I just put some lip balm on because I know foundation on my lips annoys some people and also I just thought I'd give them some hydration. Bronzer, CYO bronzer. I use the shade Fair, which is also called When the Sun Don't Shine, I think, unless that's just words on it. 
I'm gonna use my favourite brush, which is my BH Cosmetics V3. If you are fair skin toned like me, you might find that this bronzer is just perfect. <laughs> um, very cheap as well, three pounds currently on Boots. It's been discontinued. Very upsetting. Go and get it while you can and while it's really cheap. I'm just gonna start warming up my complexion. I'm probably gonna put quite a lot on just because I feel like I'm gonna do quite a like smoky, grungy eye today. Oh, hair is so annoying. I always feel like I put too much bronzer on my forehead. This is just a great cheap bronzer. It's very smooth, it's finely milled, it doesn't skip or jump, it doesn't get patchy, it lasts all day, and the colour, like I said, on fair skin, which is so great for that bit of warmth and sun kissedness. Looking like you've been out in the sun when really you prefer to stay in bed in your pajamas all day. And I know that is not just me. I am quite partial to a bronzer that has a bit of a sheen to it. This is definitely matte. So the fact that it's a favourite just shows that it is really good, in my opinion. I might add a bit more when I contour, but I'm just going to go with my powder brush. Just kind of dust over everything. Yeah, it just makes me look sun-kissed, and that's what you want a bronzer to do. And then for contour, it's my Essence Contouring Palette. I won't, I shouldn't really speak so much about things because I did speak about them all in my favourites video. I like my, where is it, my Real Techniques 004 brush and I'm going to use the dark side, darker side, because this one is in fair, I think. No, 10 lighter skin. They do have different shade options. And I'm just going to chisel the old cheekbones with the darker side and of course go around all the perimeter into my hairline I think if you're like mega 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 pale the darker side might scare you a little bit but you can use it very gently and just build it up I tend to just kind of whack it on because I like quite a strong contour mm. But you can use it more gently or use the paler side as well. I just can't understand how this is so cheap, so smooth, so buttery, it blends so well, has pigmentation, and it's so cheap <laughs> and so good. I'm gonna take just a different brush and the lighter side. Just do the rest of my jaw. Just because I'm terrible at blending jaw contour, I don't like putting on a darker one. And I'll use that lighter side on my nose as well. There is just no warmth to either of these powders. They are very cool toned. So they just add the perfect sculpt, the perfect shadow, without making it look like you've just tried to use bronzer to contour, which I never do, unless it's hula, sometimes I do. Um, but for me, there is a very big difference between bronzer and contour and this is just great because you can probably see the warmth of the bronzer and then the shadow of the contour. Okay fun part let's move on to highlight because I'm excited. This is of course my Soph Times Makeup Revolution highlight palette. I swatched it in my like favourites video. I think I'm gonna use, I think I'll actually mix this non-baked one with this baked one on my brush. These powders are something else. Let me just show you what I mean. You could put this in different packaging and I would think it was a high-end product. I think this palette's like eight pounds, seven or eight pounds, which is actually why it took me so long to buy it because I thought you know what, that's quite expensive and I don't need another highlighter palette. I won't use half of the shades. But like I said in my favourites video, it's surprising how many shades I can use in this palette. I use six out of the eight whenever I use this palette. Obviously depending on what makeup look I'm going for. 
And then I tend to use like one of the lighter shades just through the center of my face. Uh, like the nose. Look at the glow. I'm gonna go in with a bit more spray and then I'm just gonna go throw my brows off on brows on off camera and then we'll come back and do our eyes and then our lips let me show you though one more time i'm not forgetting blush by the way i'm just gonna do that once i've got my eyes on i am being very drawn oh my Mitchell palette my lovely Mitchell palette I'm being very drawn to the kind of the warm side but more for the like mustards and the browns up here Um, I think I'm gonna do some kind of like just smoky look I'm not gonna spend too long on it I've done heaps of tutorials with this palette probably the most out of any but I will put it on on camera my eyelids are set by the way they are completely dry so we'll see it go over it i think it goes on really well i think i'm meh and try my hardest not to get fallout and you just do some kind of rounded um smokyish look i think maybe all matte not sure this palette will perform better over a wet base just like kind of most palettes in the world but sometimes I like not having the pressure, if that makes sense, of doing my eyeshadow on a dry base because I feel like it, the shadows just don't go on quite as intense and then you don't have to spend as much time like blending and doing all that stuff. And yeah, it's just less pressure working on a set base than it is an unset base. But I'm sure you can see these are applying beautifully over just a dry base and I'm not going for anything too intense today but I still want it to be nice. I'm gonna blend that out with macaroni which is this kind of it's a weird color it's kind of like a baby spew color and that's why I like it. I thought I was going to like this palette, I did not think I was going to like it as much as I have done. And I remember when I first saw like a sneak peek, I was like, that's just a Stacey Marie Carnival palette. Different pans, different brand. It's so much better and even to this day I still get messages from people asking me what I would rather buy, this or the Stacey Marie. And it's just so easily this. I'm so drawn to it. Even though the Stacey Marie probably has much nicer tones of metallics in it kind of more options this palette is just so superior in my opinion pleasantly surprised i've not got very much fallout at all I think I'll just use that same brush and go in with Mixer, which is this mustard. I'm just putting that brown shade that I used in my crease Monday all over my lid. Because I'm not sure if I want to put a shimmer on. I'm, ah, I can't decide. This shade looks way darker when you use it on a wet base. I still kind of like how it's coming out. I'm not upset or I'd go in with the black. And it was just my choice to use a wet, a set base today rather than a, a wet base. I don't know, if I, I wonder if when I put on lashes, will this look way better? Do you know what I mean? Who knows, at this stage it's too early to tell. Can I use a brown eyeliner? I 
just kind of want a deep brown shimmer and this palette doesn't have one. Let me just try and find one. Yeah, I don't really do this often at all, but this has been in many favourites videos. This is my Herb Tea Moon Dust. I'm using the shade Lithium. Just on my finger. And that is just adding a little extra. Quite a lot extra, I feel. Yeah, I, I really like that. I definitely prefer that over the matte just on its own. What a beautiful shade. Yeah, I feel like that's a bit more interesting, isn't it? I love both of these palettes, but that Urban Decay was just, just a little extra. I'll throw a lash on. I don't really have a favourite lash. I like many lashes. And then we'll come back and do lips. Oh, and blush. We will do blush, I promise. Don't forget, Melissa. Why do I feel like these lashes don't match? Is it because they don't? They came from the same packet. Anyway, I might take these off and put other ones on. But in the meantime, Barry M Blush Palette. I'm going to use this shade up here. Kind of mix it with this one. A bit more of that one. This is just going to go so well with the eyes because it's just like a kind of yellowish shade. Peachy, yellowy, mustardy. I think that's why I wanted to do this kind of eye look today and not something pink. It's because I knew I had a peach blush to use. I can just trust this blush to be here at the end of the day, which is what I always want when I'm putting a blush on because quite often they do just disappear and I just think it goes so well with that eye look that I've done. I just want to say I think it's excellent, clearly. I don't know if I can get over these lashes so I'm just going to change them and then I'll be right back. I think these lashes match better. <laughs> Of course my lips are gonna be Dose of Colour Sand. I also feel like it's gonna be really complimentary to all the other tones. I just use a bit of MUA TLC lip liner. Still great, still a fave. And now I'm gonna use this. I've still got a bit of lip balm on. I think that'll be quite helpful actually. I should really use lip balm every day. I just never do. I love this colour. It is quite similar to Jeffree Star Mannequin, I would say, but it's just got a kind of more yellow undertone. I will just brush my hair and then I think we're done. So clearly I have finished. Um, I'll link everything, like I said, down below and my lashes and stuff just so you know what they are. In fact, I don't think I can link my lashes because they're only available on Primark. What are they? Well, as far as I know, they're only available on Primark. They're the Baby Doll 3D Silk Lashes in 761. I'll try and link them, but probably can't. I'm super happy with how my makeup came out. It's not a usual eye look for me, but I'm kind of feeling these kind of grungier, smoky looks these past few days. But I do think the addition of putting that Urban Decay Lithium shade on the lid just made the whole look a lot more interesting. Personally, I'm really happy with how my makeup's come out. I would be so happy if I had like a night out tonight. I would think my makeup looks good for it. I look done. I look made up. This does not look in any way natural, but this is my kind of style of makeup and I know a lot of you like it too. Obviously, you can use these products a bit more lighter and not get such a uh, makeup -y effect but overall yeah i'm super 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 happy and um, i think it looks real good that's all i've got to say about it yeah i'm just so impressed all of my favorites just work together so well in combination and that's what i really like about them as well and if i use that primer with a more expensive foundation it still looks great and on top of that the vast majority of these are drugstore and I honestly didn't really do that intentionally. It just happened and I only realized that when I was doing my intro. So I am very, very happy. And I hope that you enjoyed watching me apply my favorites. I should probably do that rather than just sit and talk about them. I don't know, sitting and talking about them is kind of boring, but actually seeing them in action, I always feel is more fun and informative. I really hope that you found this informative and if you were kind of still sitting on the fence about some of these products maybe this has made you think oh I need them or actually seeing them in action is like nah I actually don't think I will like that. Um, let me know what you think of the products that I used. I know a lot of you really like a lot of them already and actually encouraged me to try them before I did. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to go and edit this now and if you did enjoy it, it helps me out a lot if you give it a big thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment down below. 
and subscribe if you want that would be nice as always a massive thank you to my patreons thank you guys so much for your support on patreon as well as on my channel it really does baffle me the community that we have on there is just mind boggling and I feel like I've really helped some people come together and become actual real life friends which is really exciting bonding over our love of makeup. If you want to be a Patreon the link is down in the description and you can join our WhatsApp group, our Discord, our Facebook group and I do weekly lives. But if you can't or don't want to be a Patreon please don't worry about it. Watching my channel is such a massive 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 support it really does mean the world to me and on that note yeah I'm gonna piss off and I hope I'll catch you all on the flip side.